I know your colleague, Jacobo Bongiorno, he uh, recently uh, put in a, a submission to the House Select Committee for the public hearing here in Parliament House for nuclear energy. And I'll just read a little bit of the, um, the quote that he wrote about. He said, let me be clear and upfront, the nuclear, nuclear is currently neither the cheapest nor the fastest energy source to deploy. However, when integrated in a balanced mix with renewables and storage, nuclear actually reduces the average cost of electricity to consumers. This is primarily because nuclear reactors generate carbon-free electricity 24-7, 368, five days per year. What would you say to that comment? Yeah, I, I totally agree. You know, in the U.S., when we build our, you know, about 100 reactors, when initially they were building, you know, um, they, were, they did realize um, cost overruns. But today, as they're operating and producing half of our carbon-free electricity in the U.S., they are the one of the cheapest forms of generation and one of the cheapest for carbon-free generation. So everybody loves it. People around it love it. So it's, it's a really a great long-term investment. Yeah, I guess the uh, the questions are though the the capital, and also um, as our colleague here Cam Reda mentioned the um, you know the existing coal fired power stations and the, and the maintenance for that. Um, no idea on those figures. Do you have any idea on how much it would be to maintain coal fired power stations that are ending? <laughs> Uh, I, can, I can't comment for a coal power plant uh, in, in Australia, but in the U.S., again, uh, just like any big capital uh, project, once you build the power plant and pay the capital cost, the remaining cost uh, is relatively smaller compared to the original capital cost. All right. Well, this debate will be uh, going for some time, no doubt. But, uh, Professor, thank you very much for your time and expertise. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you for having me.